All right, so there are a couple of different methods of control that one could use. One is that you could um, have two, the question is like, you know, how do we create these equivalent groups? Because obviously, um, a lot of times, you're not going to have exactly the same people, right? Like, you might have, you know, let's say, um, Asian women in one condition and Asian women in another condition, but they're not going to be exactly the same women necessarily, right? Um, so how do we create two roughly equivalent groups? Well, one thing we could do is um, hold the other variables constant. So let's say we're interested in two groups of women and uh, we're worried about education, right? So maybe we'll have all, uh, all college-educated women, right? So they all have a university degree. So everybody has a university degree, and one group gets radios, right? So that might be one way we do it. We just have these two groups be the same on some extraneous variable. Or um, perhaps you're really uh, interested in whether they're married or not, right? So we might only have uh, single women in our sample, right? So both groups are made up of single women. Or perhaps we're interested in, um, in age. Maybe we want them all to be a similar age, right? Holding, const holding constant means we're holding, um, holding some suspected third variable constant. Now, the problem with holding constant, although it's a really good method of control, is that um, it's, it's, it's just really hard to do for every single variable. I mean, there's tons of variables. And it's really hard to hold more than one or two variables constant, right? Um, or else you might ha have to find a group of women who are educated, the same class, the same gender. I mean, not gender, <laughs> they're all women. Uh, same, uh, you know, age, same locale, same race. I mean, after a while, like, your pool gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and then you only have, like, three people that fit that description, right? So um, often you can only do that for one or two extraneous variables. Another method of matching is that what you have is for every uh, person you have here, you have sort of an equivalent person on in the other uh, group, right? So sometimes we might have age matching. So for every 23-year-old, you have a 23-year-old in the other group. For every 30-year-old, you have a 30-year-old in this group. For every 28-year-old, you have a 28-year-old in this group. For every 41-year-old, you have a 41-year-old in this group. And then one group gets radios. Right? So in this case, um, we're not holding some variable constant, but basically, roughly, on average, um, these, uh, these participants are roughly equal to these participants on some third variable. And so, um, so we are, uh, so you could do point by point matching, or you could do, you know, just having roughly even, uh, roughly even, uh, matching. So for here, we might have a 38-year-old, but here we might have a 36-year-old, right? But if we take the means of these two groups, they'll be roughly equivalent on this variable of age, right? So um, making sure, on average, participants in both groups equivalent on some uh, on third variable. So um, it might be how much money people make in a year. It might be whether they're married or single. So you might have a group of women who are half married, half single. But then here also you have a group that's half married, half single, right? And so matching is a little bit more loose than holding constant. But matching still has the same problems. Um, it, you can only really match on a couple of extraneous variables that you have to plan ahead of time, right? So there might be other variables that are important, but you just didn't know how important they are. Maybe um, 
whether they live in an apartment or a house or have roommates or not. Maybe those are really important, but perhaps you didn't uh, match for those variables. All right, but if you think about it, there is a big problem. There are so many variables that might be important, right? Like stuff that we don't even know. Like maybe it's like some having some fold in the thalamus region of your brain might be really important to birth control, right? Or maybe, you know, some prior experience with your first boyfriend is really important. Or Maybe how hungry you tend to be is really important. Who knows? There are a billion extraneous variables. There are an infinite number of them. How would we possibly match for all of them? It's impossible. We can't hold those things all constant. We can't match for all those things. So what are we going to do? Well, one thing is to trust, again, in randomness. One way of doing it is create two groups, and women are randomly assigned to these two groups. So it's like flipping a coin for each person, like heads you get in that group, tails you get in that group, right? And by, by doing it randomly, hopefully you'll have a, a even mix of women who are both hungry and not hungry here, and hungry and not hungry in here. Or people who have had bad experiences with their first boyfriend here, but you also have people who have bad experiences with their first boyfriend in here, right? So they are randomly put into groups so that the two groups are roughly, uh, roughly equivalent on all kinds of extraneous variables that you didn't even know existed. Now, with random assignment, the issue is you are putting your trust in randomness. Randomness doesn't always mean that you will get equivalent groups. In both of these methods of control, you definitely end up with equivalent groups for those variables that you controlled. But for random assignment, you could roughly have two equivalent groups for lots and lots of variables that you didn't even know about, but in exchange, you also don't have, um, you don't have a guarantee that these two groups are equivalent, so there's no guarantee. But often random assignment is used just because there are so many variables that are, are just really hard to control.